Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the Hyphenate here. And today we're going to talk about one of my new favorite 60 watt COB lights, and that's the iFootage Anglerfish SL160DN. This little light is a beast. It is extremely high quality and very affordable. Now, there are a ton of different COB lights on the market right now, especially those that are around the 60 watt range. Now, some are bigger, some are smaller, some are more expensive, some are cheaper. Now, to me, none of that really matters. What matters to me is how color accurate the light is and how well it's reproduced on camera. Now, the Anglerfish SL160DN is probably one of the most accurate lights on the market, period. When it comes to the scientific tests, which I really don't do, but I've seen a lot of the other big YouTubers do, all of them unanimously have talked about how accurate this light is and how good it is to reproducing sunlight. Because of that, skin tones look extremely natural when using this light. Because of how small it is, how accurate it is, and how affordable the price is, this is definitely the light that I think is the must have for content creators. Now, currently iFootage does have three different lights in this series. They have the 60DN, the 220DN, and the 320DN. Now, obviously the 220 and the 320 are way more powerful, but for medium to smaller studios or sets, this 60DN is more than enough power. Right now, this is set to 0.1% output. This is bright. Now with it being so lightweight and the various power options that it has, you can pretty much mount this in most places pretty easily. Now single color COB lights might not be the most sexy thing to talk about, but for me being a quality junkie, this is the type of light that excites me. Now because the SL160DN is so light and compact, you don't really need a big light stand. You don't really need a heavy duty C stand. You can actually mount this on a smaller, lighter light stand. Now, if you're using a big Bowens mount modifier, like a big softbox or big lantern, then I definitely recommend getting a heavier duty stand. So now I wanna talk about the bundle package that comes with the carrying case and a few accessories. As always, iFootage makes incredible carrying cases, very high quality and very clean. At the top, you do have carrying handles. You do have this little Velcro strap on each end, which allows you to put some type of gear in here and hold it in place. And one thing I like in almost all their bags, in their little zippers here, they do have this little hook, makes it easy to open and close the zippers. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. At the top, you do get a little 3 8 or quarter inch 20 adapter to a standard 5 8 inch stud. Essentially a light stand mount. And then you get an extra Velcro strap. And then as soon as you go to the inside of the case, you do have a power cable here that has its own cutout. This is roughly about 15 feet long. Underneath that, we do have our light. This thing is tiny. I love how small it is. Then here we have the reflector dish. It has a whole area dedicated to just that. And then you have these foam cutouts that do cover each item, essentially making the top a little bit more flat. So when you put the power cable back in. Now here in this little open area that doesn't have a cutout, there is the brick that has the port that plugs right into the light and the power cable goes into here. Now this cable is roughly about six feet long. Now because this side goes into the light, this is what normally ends up being hung or attached to a light stand. And they do have this metal wire here to make it easy to hang. My only issue with it is that it's attached to the part here that actually has the cable. And my problem with that is that over time, I feel it's going to put stress and bend this cable a little too much and it can risk kind of damaging the cable. I'd much rather them have some type of light rubber cover that goes around the brick that has an attachment point there. So that way none of the cables are having any stress on them. Now, as much as I do love the case and how they have designated areas for each item, so that way they don't bump into each other, they don't get damaged. The only problem is that you have no room for any accessories. So if you get the Bowens adapter mount or even the V mount battery mount, there's nowhere to put it. Most people who get this light are gonna get those two accessories. And ideally you would want there to be space to be able to carry all that together. So let's take a closer look at the back of the 60DN. Here on the bottom right, you have your power port. Now this is where you plug in the included AC power cable that then connects to the wall. If you get the additional V-mount adapter, it does have the same port here. So you put your V-mount battery and then you go ahead and connect that and then you're good to go. Here on the left, you have a USB type C port. Now this is not for updating firmware. This actually allows it to receive power from an external battery bank. Now the battery bank does have to be 
power delivery with 100 watts at minimum. I don't really know any other powerful lights that are 60 watts or above that actually allow USB battery bank power. This is actually really awesome and intuitive. Though personally, I do prefer using V-mount batteries. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the power and go ahead and turn this on by holding the power button here in the middle. Now it is a pretty small display, no color, nothing fancy. It's pretty much straight to the point. Now you do have two knobs, each with a clickable button that can be pushed in. The left is the dim. This literally only controls the brightness. So going left, obviously to zero, right, you can go all the way up to 100%. Now you can turn the knob slowly. If you turn the knob faster, it obviously ends up going through the percentages faster, depending on how much you turn it. Now, if you press the knob in, it does have a button. And every time you press it, it does cycle through percentages in 20% increments. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And then if you press it again, it goes back to zero. I really like being able to do that. Now, moving the knob on the right is how you cycle through the menu. And pressing the button in is to select. So right now, you have intensity. You can go to the right and go to effects. Go ahead and press set or select it in. And then you can go through the different effects. You have fireworks, lightning, paparazzi, welding, strobe, explosion, pulsing, faulty bulb. Obviously, since this is just a single color, you don't have a lot of crazy effects. Different effects have different things you can change. Now, you can use this with the app. And in the app, I actually find it a lot easier to be able to go through certain settings. And sometimes you do get more options depending on the effect. Now, if you want to get out of the effects mode, just press the left button in which will take you back to intensity, which again is the brightness. If we scroll past effects, we go to the menu, select that. Now, whatever's highlighted, when you press set, it'll change those options. So right now the fan is set to auto. If you press it in once, you go to UQD and then to quiet. Now, auto is ideal. The fan does not really kick on until you go to a higher power. If it doesn't get too hot, then the fan will stay off. Now, no, honestly, I have no idea what UQD is. And I can't seem to find anything about that in the manual. So I footage or if someone out there knows, please comment below. Let me know what the UQD is. Now, if we set it to quiet mode, then that means the fan is actually pretty much off. Now, when it's in quiet mode and the fan is off, you can only go up to 50% output power. You cannot go higher than that in quiet mode. Even in quiet mode, when the fan is off, you want to make sure that the air vents on the top and the bottom of the unit are not covered. And you want to make sure that this stays as cool as possible while in silent mode so it doesn't overheat. Now, moving on from fan, the next option that we can change is curve. And you can actually change the dimming curve, which is actually pretty awesome to be able to just do very easily. You have four different options. After the dimming curve, you have Bluetooth reset as an option. Now, if you've already connected this to an app and you want to connect to another app, you're going to have to end up resetting the Bluetooth. So all you have to do is once that's highlighted, press the button in and it'll reset the Bluetooth. And then you can go ahead and connect this to another app. Or if you want to go back to the app you were using, you will have to actually add this light again. And then under that, you have language. I'm going to keep it at English. And underneath that, we have restore if you want to restore all the settings. And then underneath that, it's not an option, but you can see what version we're in. Now, in order to do a firmware update on this light, you actually have to do that through the iFootage Lumen app, which is available for Android and Apple. And I do have a video in the description that shows you how to use that app with these lights. My biggest issue with the Bowens mount adapter is that it does not work well with the V-mount adapter. The V-mount adapter has this whole handle here, and it takes up a lot of area where the bottom of the Bowens mount adapter goes. So here you can see how much space is being taken up. When you have this, you can't actually tilt down very much, and you're very limited on the area that you have to move the softbox. Everything's just clunky and takes up way too much space. It's not a very ergonomic setup. So you don't have a lot of room to tilt down when you have the V-mount battery adapter on it. This is as far as I can tilt down, which is very minimal. I would much rather them have a bigger Bowens mount adapter that's taller from the bottom here where the light stand goes. So that way you have more room to tilt down as well as maybe having some type of setup where the mount could be horizontal on the light stand. This handle is great if you're actually trying to have it handheld, but I don't really know many people that are trying to walk around with this light in their hand. All right, so I want to show you guys what the spread looks like with and without the reflector dish. Right now it's off and the light is about five feet away from the wall that it's facing. I'm going to lower the ISO on my camera, turn off the house lights, and now I'm going to start to increase the brightness here. 
Again, this thing is pretty bright. Now, without the reflector dish, you can see here, let's go to 100% output. You can see here, it's a pretty wide spread. You got a good amount of light going around. At five feet away from the wall, there's not really a noticeable hotspot. Now, you're probably getting about eight feet in width of the wall that I'm actually pointing at right now. So again, not really any hotspots, looks great. Let's go ahead and put the reflector dish on. And now you're definitely getting a hotspot. And as you can see, the light is actually quite a bit brighter now that it's all being focused towards the center. So now I've turned off all the lights that I have in the ceiling, which are normally the lights that I use for these types of videos. And the only light source in front of me now is the 60DN, which I have at this angle here. And it's roughly about five feet away from me, about seven and a half feet high. Now I have no reflector dish, no diffusion. It's just the light on its own. And as you can see, it's a pretty widespread, like I mentioned earlier. So you don't really see any hotspots, though it is a strong source of light coming in, even at 3.5%. So you do have some harsh shadows, as you can see here on my sweater. Or if I put my hand here, like you can see how strong those shadows are. Now, right now, this light is at 3.5% output power, just very low. And you can see how bright it already is. I'm at ISO 500 on my camera shooting at 24 frames per second. So shutter speed is at 1 50th of a second. And just to show you how bright this light is, I'm going to go ahead and crank it up to 100%. Oh, that's crazy bright. Now, hands down, this is one of the most accurate COB lights on the market, period. And you can see here just right now, my skin tones look extremely natural. Like this actually looks great. It looks like I'm outside in regards to color reproduction. The light is 5600 Kelvin. And right now I have my white balance on my camera set to daylight and it looks great. This looks very, very nice. Color wise, this light is phenomenal. Now I'm gonna actually put on some diffusion because when I do videos like this, I definitely prefer some type of diffusion, some softbox. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on this smaller softbox that's made by iFootage. This is a Bowens mount, so I'm gonna put the Bowens mount adapter on the light and go ahead and put this on. All right, so now I have the softbox on with the grid, and now because there is some diffusion, obviously some light is being cut, so I do have to increase the output now. So I'm gonna change it from 3.5% to, let's see, I think about 5.5% looks good. Now, if you look at the shadows, they are a lot softer now. Again, when I shoot these types of videos, I definitely prefer some type of diffusion. And in all honesty, I actually prefer lanterns over soft boxes. Luckily, iFootage also has a lantern, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that on now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on their bigger lantern. Now, in all honesty, that looks a lot better. And I actually think this is now probably gonna be my main light source when I shoot these types of videos. Now, I do have the output power at 6%, which I think is the sweet spot for my current settings. Earlier, I mentioned that this light does work off the iFootage Lumen app, and it works great. So I'm going to just take you through a little bit of the app, just quick little settings just to show you how responsive it is. Though, if you want to know exactly how to control this light and how to operate it, including firmware updates, etc., I do have a dedicated video to using these lights with the Lumen app, and I have a link for that in the description. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and move the slider up and down with the app just to show you how responsive it really is. We're gonna go into some of the settings. Let's say we go to paparazzi. All right, so I'm in pulsing. Let's go to explosion. There's a trigger button, which I love when they have that. Boom, explosion. Lightning and all kinds of stuff. But really, mostly I use this for just regular CCT light, so. Again, everything is super responsive with this app. And through the app, you can also control the dimming curve. So there you guys have it. That's my review of the iFootage Anglerfish SL1 60DN Lite. It's really awesome, affordable, has a lot to offer, and is most importantly, extremely accurate, thus making it, I think, the best choice for content creators and people that need a light source in a small to medium-sized studio. Now there's definitely a lot of power in this little light, so you can actually use it in larger studios as well, but I think they really shine in medium spaces. If you're interested in getting this light or any of the other gear that I use, I do have links in the description where you can purchase them. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please make sure to drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.